Hi, this is Yosef Bhatia and we are here at SAP Sapphire and today we have with us Richard Holland, your VP of Solution Management for ERP Finance and Digital Supply Chain at SAP. Richard, it's great to have you on the show. It's a pleasure to speak to you. When we talk about supply chain, of course, this is a hot topic these days once again and I'm not talking about the software supply chain, which is a totally different right. area. We're talking about physical supply chain, which you enable your organization. Talk a bit about because of this whole not only geopolitical situation changing, a lot of innovation is happening. You know, the, the also uh, the companies are like, like you know post COVID era things have changed. So talk a bit about what kind of changes you have seen in the supply chain, which also demand different solutions. Okay, so I mean things have evolved so much in the last three years. I mean supply chains for the last twenty years have been all around cost reduction and efficiency, and uh, as a result we created very global supply chains. And the reality is that the pandemic exposed the risk in our supply chains. And the, the, the word that has described supply chains for the last three years would be resiliency. How do I become more resilient? How do I uh, minimize risk as much as possible? So we've seen companies, uh, well, first of all, supply chains have now got a seat at the table from an executive level. It's a boardroom discussion. It's even a dining room discussion at homes. My family didn't really know what I did until the last three years and now they get it a little bit. So supply chains have become front and center. Uh, resilience have been, has been the key, which means that we've had to, in many cases, redesign and find new ways of doing business through our supply chains. Look for alternate sourcing strategies. Uh, leverage inventory optimization strategies to better position inventory. Um, look at offshoring and nearshoring manufacturing or move from offshoring to nearshoring and onshoring. Uh, so all of these are different things that have been driving uh, supply chains in the last three years. And I'm seeing more and more as well, uh, moving forward, sustainability will join resiliency as a key driving factor. Uh, if we just go and look at the COVID era, uh, we learn a lot of lessons, companies, you know, optimize there. And it sometimes it seemed like that optimization was for COVID era but some of those practices has kind of become a new norm. Yes. Plus, uh, if we look at post covid cost is becoming a factor. Companies are trying to become more cost efficient. Once again, supply chain plays a big role there. So how do you see these two have played a role in once again efficient? Supply chain's always been a balancing act. Uh, previously, it was all around cost and efficiency and that balancing act. But now cost and efficiency have been joined by resiliency and by sustainability. So. I don't think we'll ever go back to the fully global supply chains. I think we will have local supply chains uh, for key components, for example. Uh, closer manufacturing for, or having manufacturing closer to the actual demand, because that does reduce the risk. So supply chains, as you say, it's the new normal. But I don't think we'll ever go back to the totally global single sourcing in one country, because we know the risk of that now. There will always be alternate strategies of I may be still uh, supplying a lot of my goods from, from China, but I have an alternate supplier for, in cases of emergency. And I split that 70-30 and I have the ability even contracts in place to, to change that dimension in different ways. So I think what the pandemic has caused is really us to be more, have more resilient risk mitigation strategies. So again, cost is still a key part of this because you still need to be profitable but you've got to be profitable and sustainable and keep customer service levels high. So that balancing act is the way that I'm seeing supply chain executives looking at things today. What are some of the fears that you hear again and again from customers because they have limited control over supply chain, but you can efficiently help them? I think we're hearing a lot about uh, how do I better leverage a network? How do I get better visibility of which suppliers can provide that material and have contracts in place with those suppliers? Um, how can I better position inventory around my supply chains? I, uh, it might be keeping more stock of certain products, it might be keeping less stock of certain products, but having the right products in the right place at the right time. And whether we're talking about resiliency or sustainability, the answer is always we need to improve visibility. Because you, you can't manage what you can't measure and you can't measure what you can't manage. So you have to have improved visibility across the supply chain which means a better collaboration and tighter relationships with suppliers, with contract manufacturers, uh, with logistics service providers, and any other partners as well. So that visibility outside, within the four walls and outside of the four walls of your organization is critical. What advice or how companies should approach, so because there are some patterns 
based on that, it doesn't really matter which industry you are in. These are the practices for you know having very secure, resilient supply chain. Mm -hmm. I'll go back to some of the things I said a little earlier. It's it's about uh, identifying or, or network design, designing your networks to design risk out of your supply chain, of having those alternate sourcing strategies, of having the inventory in the right positions, of working with uh, your manufacturing facilities and, and having them as close as practical uh, to, to, to your, uh, your, your demand. And the demand becomes really important as well, having an accurate view of demand, leveraging technology to not only get look at the forecast as a way of demand, but looking at the point of sales information, looking at sentiment analysis, because the better your view of demand, the better that your business processes will respond to that, because if you start with the wrong demand, you're going to be making the wrong materials, make, making the wrong products, which means you're going to be ordering the wrong raw materials, and it all starts rolling from there. It's a bullwhip effect. Yeah, it is. Uh, now, since we are here at Sapphire, I would also love to hear any, any specific announcements that were made in terms of you know, supply chain. Uh, one of the, the, there's been several big announcements around Sapphire, and one of them has been around AI. And we've embed, we are in continuously embedding AI capabilities into our supply chain solutions. Uh, for example, what we've announced uh, at this event is uh, improved slotting capabilities in the warehouse management uh, logic, which means it helps you optimize inventory and have the right inventory in the right place within the warehouse and optimize the use of the warehouse. Another example was in transportation management, where we've included, inc uh, improved the freight freight receiving process. So you can use generative AI to, to better automate the uh, receiving process and matching processes within inventory management. I think I touched upon some key point that were there. Is there anything else that you folks think, hey, we should talk about this as well? I, I think uh, some of the other things that have happened, uh, the business network mm -hmm. um, and, and improving, well, sustainability and the business network come hand in hand in many cases. But having uh, more sustainable practices what we've seen is that sustainability is a big issue. Many companies have created uh, quite ambitious goals for being carbon neutral by a certain date. And the challenge is that many of them don't have the tools in place to actually capture that information, to be able to act and respond on that information. And supply chains are both a major problem when it comes to sustainability but therefore also a huge area of opportunity. And capturing emissions, uh, minimizing waste, and, 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 and alleviating inequality within the supply chain is a key driver for most businesses as they strive to the, those goals. Uh, we've, one of the other things that we've announced at Sapphire is enhancements to the footprint management solution, which is uh, really a life cycle um, sustainability calculation for a product or, or products capturing real information, not estimates and, and averages. And the whole green ledger concept of every, every transaction has a, a financial cost, but also an environmental cost. If we can start capturing that real-time information, those real numbers, then we'll, get, we'll at least be able to measure if we're starting to strive towards our goals and put actions in place to improve that. Richard, uh, thank you so much for taking time out today and of course uh, talk about the whole supply chain, uh, some of the announcements that were made there and the role of us again AI, generative AI and as usual I would love to chat with you again so thank you. It's been my pleasure, thanks for, thanks for having the opportunity.